All right, this place called Sacco Pizza in New York. I, I was told that it was the best New York style pizza. I'll, I'll take a bite at the end. But we got a Fort Anders update. They have released Tracy Walker the third from the practice squad. Now Walker was on this football team because of the Tano Hufanga injury, which made Hufanga unavailable. So Tracy Walker is no longer on the 49ers practice squad, and they now have one spot to fill on that practice squad. When you look at the 49ers active roster, the 53-man roster, they've got two spots, or they will have two spots, because Javon Hargrave is going to go to injured reserve probably tomorrow. They already had an opening before then. So the 49ers probably are going to make a flurry of moves starting tomorrow to fill that Walker spot and then to fill the Hargrave spot and the one that was already open. You don't always have to have the 53 totally filled up, but I think a flurry is probably coming for the 49ers at some point very soon. So anyway, we had the bagels from New York earlier and we got the recommendation from Robert to check out Sacco Pizza. I personally am more on the New York has unique bagels than New York has unique pizza train, but Sacco was good. I just, I think I've got a little too much Italian in me. I think you've got to go for the Neapolitan pizzas, but that's probably going to be sacrilegious to some. Anyway, there's your 49ers update. Here's Sacco Pizza here in New York. We'll be back in San Francisco tomorrow. And you know what? Maybe we'll tack on Kyle Shanahan's conference call as well. The game, uh, he winners with the ankle, um, just aggravated his previous injury. Um, Brock Purdy has some back soreness, he'll be day to day. And um, Javon Hargrave, um, if you're wrong about, he uh, partially tore his triceps, so he'll likely be out for the season. Um, that's it for the game. Go ahead. Kyle, I'm obviously surprised by the Hargrave injury. How, how, how was he playing and how big of a loss is that right now? Um, I mean, it's a, it's a big one. And I thought he had his best game yesterday. I thought he was a huge factor. Um, really affected the quarterback in that game. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a big loss. He's one of our better players. And um, he's definitely going the right direction. He's going to have a big year. Uh, what do you guys do now to, to compensate for the loss of Javon? Um, I mean, we're still working through that. We got a couple guys on practice squad that we'll most likely bring up. Um, we got some outside guys who are good inside rushers. You know, as far as um, pass, pass downs and things like that. Um, so we'll always look out uh, what's available out there. But um, usually, you can go to your practice squad and hope to get Kalia Davis back soon too, um, which would help. Not this week, I, I don't think, but um, hopefully so. Uh, and you it's you for the season, is there a chance like, that you get, get back to the playoffs? Uh, I, I believe so. Um, but when you, when you partially tear it or tear it, you know, we're recommending surgery. So when you get surgery, that's usually that's a few months at least. So, I mean, if there was a chance, it'd have to be late in the playoffs. So. Kind of as far as Brock, is there any concern there about anything structural or anything of that nature? Uh, his, his MRI was good, so um, we feel good about that. It's just sore today, and uh, hopefully it'll feel better by Wednesday. Yeah, I'll turn I'll to the game. Turning to the game, I have a question about how you guys handle the end of the in the regulation. Uh, we've seen you guys, we've seen you in the past, at the end of the first half, make a, a major priority to not allow the other team to get the ball back. Why was it that the thinking toward the end of regulation when you guys took over with 151 left? Um, I think it is the thinking. It's not the number one goal. The number one goal is to try to win the game right there, which um, I believe we had every opportunity to do. but. Uh, that's why 
we didn't get him in two minutes on that second and uh, I think it was second and six. We threw a curl route to BA and we huddled up after it. So uh, that was totally the thought process. And then uh, the next down we had an incompletion and then we had a drop and, and it was third and ten and they had one timeout left. So you know by that time then it's over. You got to move the chains or they're going to be able to use their timeout and go. And uh, Brock ended up scrambling on us, so we had them use their timeout. Uh, but there wasn't a time that we could run out the clock. You know, obviously we didn't get to get it done, didn't make the catch, and you know you could come out and, and run it the first couple downs, and things like that. But we were trying to win it with that in our mind, and that's that's why we when we were in bounds, that's why we huddled up and didn't go into two minute mode. Kyle, how was having him back out there from an energy standpoint, and what did you think of his performance in his first game back? Um, I thought it was a good first game back. You know, he wasn't at the point of attack too much, but um, definitely had made some plays in it, had a good tackle on the sidelines. Um, and I think he held up pretty well. I haven't got to talk to him personally, but the film looked good, and hopefully it was a good step in the right direction, and I'll build off that going forward throughout the season. Kyle, uh, Christian traveled to Germany over the weekend, I, I believe. And, uh, is that just to visit with Dr. Wheeling, and what's your understanding of what he's hoping to accomplish there? I'm not sure what doctor it is. I, just, I know he's going to see a specialist that I believe can help him with his Achilles process. Um, uh, I think he's doing that over these next few days, and hopefully it'll help. One more Achilles question about uh, Trey Greenlaw. Um, is, is there a timeline yet on you know, approximately when he might be able to come back? Um, no, I mean, when I said out at the beginning of the year, I was hoping uh, mid-season, so I haven't asked here in the last couple of weeks, but that was what it was at the beginning of the year, and um, still hoping that, so, but mid-season still, still a ways away. Uh, why did D. Winters enter for uh, Campbell at the, on the Rams' third series? Uh, I just played on it before the game. You know, he wanted to do that early going into this year also, um, but he just got hurt there, um, I think, in that last preseason game, so that um, set that back a little bit, and he's gotten healthy, and we plan on doing that early, just like the week before we planned on doing it with um, Gio and uh, Malik. So um, we started that, and then he got hurt on, he re, re aggravated his ankle on, on the fake punt. Is that any reflection of, of kind of dissatisfaction with Campbell's performance? Uh, no, it's we want to keep working to get the best guys out there, and he's had a good camp, and um, he showed that he deserves the chance to push him, and uh, he did good on the plays that he did when he was in there, and hopefully he'll get healthy so we can keep doing the same stuff. Uh, where is Jacob Kelly on his uh, progression in getting involved in the offense, and were there thoughts about getting him any more, any snaps on offense? Um, he's still working to get out there. You know, he's trying to get more comfortable with the offense and just earn a roll with it and get closer and closer each week. Um, still got a bit to go, though. Yeah, how has he been looking? I mean, he's obviously back, not off the injury list, but does uh, he look like he's normal health-wise other than that? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's totally healthy. Is it more mental uh, understanding of the offense and where he needs to be? Uh, there's lots of reasons that go into it, but um, he hasn't been able to make his way into the group yet. And the more he gets comfortable with the offense and the more consistent he gets, uh, then uh, he'll earn those opportunities. Kyle, there was, there was a point late in the game where it, it looked like Brock had, had Brandon open late and, and saw him and kind of hesitated to throw it and ended up coming back to, to Jennings. What, what, what did you see on that play? What, what was kind of the reason that Brock maybe didn't let that one go? Uh, they busted a coverage, and, and B.A. had a deep curl route, and they busted a coverage, so B.A. did the right thing and, and just took off and went to that hole, and it kind of caught um, Brock by surprise because, you know, B.A. was number two in the progression when he looked to him. B.A. wasn't in the right spot um, because they busted a coverage, and, and he went down the field, and Brock thought about it. Uh, he just wasn't sure where the rest of the safety was or anything, so he wasn't anticipating that to happen, and um, it would have worked, obviously, if he let it go, but... Uh, that happens sometimes. Defense busts the coverage, and if you're not looking at the guy the whole time, who uh, all, uh, all of a sudden turns it into a go route, uh, you can't always just let it rip. Hey. 
Can, can you explain that a little bit more? What coverage were they supposed to be in and what did they end up doing? Um, they're supposed to be in two sky week and the corner state is supposed to be a half player, stayed in a cloud and didn't play half. That's kind of what I thought. Yeah. Um, last year you had you know, pretty good injury luck. That's the turn, you know, particularly with your, your star players. Obviously, totally different so far this year. I mean, I don't know, stupid question, I guess, but do you have a sense if, like, this may not happen back-to-back -back years going into this? What well, may not happen back-to-back -back years? Well, just like having, you know, having guys stay healthy, you know, particularly your, your star players. Uh, yeah, I mean, injuries are always a part of it. We've had to deal with it a number of years, um, sometimes more than others. I think last year, um, just mainly with some of our main guys, we were very fortunate. You know, they didn't miss too many games. Um, this year has been totally different to start out, uh, so that's been real tough. You know, I'd like to try to stay positive with it that, you know, all of them eventually are going to come back, but um, that probably changed with Hargrave today, so that, that was a tough pill to swallow there. Um, but yeah, we definitely haven't had the, the luck that we had last year. Did the Rams go into four twelve personnel? I don't know. Was that a surprise in, in any way, or did it mess with your defense? Uh, not really. Just with that being down there, two um, top receivers, and you know, we had a feeling that they might do it more, something that they they've never done. But um, we definitely. Um, thinking it could be a possibility, which is their injury situation. Now, what did you have from your after looking at the, at the film? From who? From the secondary and uh, coverage. Um, I mean, I thought the biggest thing was, you know, when you give up three deep balls for 130 yards and only one of them was a completion, uh, you know, that was tough right there. You know, got the two PIs, you had, I think, one 50-yard PI another 30 yard PI there at the end and then the one that they got by our defense on the one they completed inside the four yard line so I thought that was the toughest part about it um, and that's what gave them a chance to get back in the game and eventually beat us Do you have any updates on Mooney and Kittle? Um, let's see Kittle uh, hope to get him back in practice this week and, um, and Mooney is good to go thread that runs through where the issues have been? I know they've, they've come in different areas through these last couple of weeks, but what, what do you need to see from that, that special teams unit as a whole that, that hasn't been out there producing so far? Um, I mean, I personally, I mean, I always love the special teams to help, to help win, but my biggest thing is um, to not help lose, and it's not by making mistakes. And, you know, we had a bad one in Minnesota with uh, the block punt, and then we had a bad one this week with um, giving up the fake punt. So those are two things that we got to shore, shore up. I mean, I would always love to make plays and stuff on special teams, but the um, biggest thing is um, to not be one of the reasons that you lose. And those are two huge things, one in Minnesota and then yesterday on that fake punt. And that's stuff we got to be more prepared for versus coaches um, and get our guys ready for that a lot better than we did yesterday. And, and there's also the long punt return. Is that a, a matter of the young guys not fully embracing their roles or not being, uh, not having enough experience in those roles? Um, well, I mean, you'd love to be able to make the tackle the gunner. I loved how, um, I think uh, Malik shot his guns, um, which slows the guy down a little bit, and you need a contained player on, the, on that play when he gets to the sidelines. You know, there was a clip in the back, um, which would have, you know, negated him from getting to the sidelines, but once they did uh, end up clipping us, he got to that edge, and our contained player who was supposed to be there was not there. Uh, he was sucked up in the middle, and then it get to that, which was a huge play. And, um, that's coaching, that's playing, that's everything. But that's why it happened, and uh, we got to make sure that we get a guy there. Because if they do get to the edge, however they get to the edge, you better have a guy in contain, and we did it. Hello? Okay, and Kyle, is Ethan is Gross Matos a possibility to play on the interior? Uh, yes, he is. 